Today we're going to have a look at the Magic Mask feature in DaVinci Resolve 17 Studio version. The Magic Mask feature is only available in the Studio version, not the free version. To test this, I have lined up three clips. I have a green screen clip to use as an easy option to see how well it does compared to a green screen. Then I have a clip outside in a vlogging setup to see how it could do in a really tricky situation and I have a third clip which is a full body clip. The magic mask feature is on the colour panel. Switch over to the colour panel on the bottom and then it's in the middle menu bar along from your curves. And the magic mask does the same thing as a zoom background removal tool that we've all got used to using in our web conferences but it allows for more control. To enable the magic mask, you have two options. You can either select by person or by feature. However, for this example, I'm going to just be using select by person as this is the first try of the software. To select the person you want to mask out after you're on the magic mask menu, you have to use the plus dropper icon and then make a mark anywhere on the person's face or body and it seems to find them. This is the magic part. There are two settings faster and better. I've tried both and better does, as it says, give slightly a better result. Both settings take quite a while. They're both very GPU intensive. I have found you need to go back to the start of the clip, add the mark and then track forward. I have found adding the mark halfway through the clip only tracks forward from that point. So if you then go back to the start of the clip and tell it to track forward, it doesn't do it, it just tracks forward from the point where you added the mark. As you can see in my task manager, it's using 100% of my GPU. I haven't got a very slow GPU, but it does struggle. I'm using 4K footage here in 422, so it should have plenty of data to work with. To see what the mask has done, click on the show mask button. This then highlights the area inside the mask in red. To remove the background, like for a green screen effect, on the node section, add alpha output and then drag the blue box to the blue output. This then uses the mask's inverse to cut everything apart from the bit that's selected. This will cut everything but the person. If you have no image behind it, it will appear black. I then repeated these steps two more times for the other clips but instead of faster, I use the better settings. As this is right on the edge of what my computer can manage, I did not finesse the settings. You may be able to get better results by changing these settings. The green screen clip works quite well. It manages to track my face and my body and cuts me out from the background. There are some green fringing around my hair and around my ears. This is worse than a green screen. So if you do have a green screen, then use that instead, because I've found that that performs better than this. The vlogging clip surprised me. The background was full of trees and plants, some of which would have been close to my skin tone or my clothing, and it managed to cut out successfully. It maintains the track even when I move the camera. It remains locked on even when I move. The third clip, I stood in a field with the blue sky behind me, I thought this would be an easy test for the software to do. But unfortunately it struggled with this one. It seemed to draw a bubble around me and didn't do much of the fine details. I don't know whether this was because I was far away in the frame or I had the settings turned down too much. I left them on default and they worked for the others. But I only filled a small proportion of the frame in this one. Managed to track around my arms but it leaves lots of blue sky behind me. If I was using this to place myself in another scene, it would be a good starting point for rotoscoping, but I would need to do manual cleanup afterwards. My thoughts. This isn't gonna replace my green screen use, as the green screen performs much better. It will help with grading, because you can select a person and then just grade them separately to the background. This will help if the person is slightly underexposed or slightly overexposed compared to the background because you can just select them and then pull them back or push them to the right exposure level. It would be quite a nice effect if you were creating a low budget or quick animation. 
because it allows you to rotoscope a lot of people to an acceptable level very quickly. You could easily set up many clips from material which isn't green screened to rotoscope them out to say put them in a crowd scene. But you would need to be more careful around the edges.